So now in our final video on membranes and transport, we'll summarize and conclude with the two final types of endocytosis. So just to recall what we did in our previous video, we talked about bulk transport. And bulk transport was something that always needed cell energy in the form of ATP. It always needed to be active transport. And it was not carrier-mediated transport because it did not involve transport proteins. When we went over exocytosis, which was the process of, let's say, spitting out things from the cell, releasing things from the cell, we never ever mentioned transport proteins. And then when we went over endocytosis, which is the process of taking cell things into the cell, we never ever mentioned proteins or transfer proteins, and we talked about specifically phagocytosis. And remember, the things that do phagocytosis really well are white blood cells of your immune system. So now we'll finish off by talking about the other type of cytosis um, that goes under endocytosis. One of them uh, is pinocytosis. So... We as humans, we like to eat and we also like to drink. Cells do the same thing. This is literally defined as cell drinking. Instead of cell eating, we have now cell drinking. This is how the cell takes in fluid and dissolved materials. Fluid plus dissolved materials. Because if it's in fluid, if something's in fluid, chances are it's going to be dissolved because that fluid is probably going to be a watery, aqueous fluid that's a very good solvent, a very good dissolver. So in this process, what we expect to see are droplets of fluid getting wrapped. So we'll write this down. Droplets of fluid are outside of the cell. Okay, Imagine droplets of fluid um, just chilling outside of the cell droplets of fluid um, and these droplets of fluid gets wrapped by plasma membrane folds. So the plasma membrane, think of it as like sort of pinching out, seeing droplets of fluid and then wrapping itself in a certain section onto those droplets of fluid. Once it's wrapped itself onto them, it's going to pinch off, much like we saw in phagocytosis, pinch off into the cytoplasm as a pinocytotic vesicle. Cytotic vesicle. So over here, we had a phagocytotic vesicle going into the cell, the cell just ate something, and that cell is now going to pinch that thing off into the cytoplasm. Here now the cell just drank something and drank it and formed a pinocytotic vesicle. So that's all pinocytosis is. The, the sort of end-all be-all that you should understand between these two is that this is cell eating, this is cell drinking, they both are endocytosis, they both involve ATP because they are bulk transport. Lots of molecules, lots of large molecules being transported into the cell in this situation because it's endo, which means into or inside. The last type of endocytosis we'll look at is called receptor-mediated endocytosis. Receptor-mediated, and I'm just going to write endo endocytosis in this situation. This is actually, you can write this down over here on the side as a sort of a side note. It's actually the main way um, eukaryotic, I'll just write EU for eukaryotic, cells um, take in things. So I'm just going to write take in uh, stuff. If I can fit that right there. Okay. This is the main way um, eukaryotic cells are going to take in stuff. So this says receptor-mediated. I know it's a little bit sloppy right here. So receptor-mediated endocytosis. Let's look at this process step by step. What happens? What you're going to have here in this situation are receptor proteins in the plasma membrane. So remember, we're going to have receptor proteins in plasma membrane. They're just located across the plasma membrane. And then we're going to have a specific 
macromolecule, something large. Remember, because this is bulk transport, we have large molecules we're talking about. Specific macromolecule, uh, molecule in the extracellular fluid. If this is a cell and this is the inside of the cell, everything on the outside here is called ESF. That's extracellular fluid, outside of the cell fluid. So, once we have this sort of arrangement occur, we're now going to have protein uh, that pro the proteins themselves on the plasma membrane will actually cluster. They're going to cluster together um, in coated pits is the term here. This is kind of weird. It's called coated pits. They cluster together in coated pits to surround a particle. And as they're sort of surrounding this particle, they're going to now create a vesicle. They've created a vesicle because they've surrounded a particle that they found interesting. These are all arrows, actually. Once they've created that vesicle, that vesicle is now going to, it actually fuses with a primary lysosome. Once you fuse with the primary lysosome, if you remember all the way back to cell biology when we talked about cell structure, you've now created a secondary lysosome. Once you've created a secondary lysosome, you can now undergo digestion. This is how a cell does things in a different sort of form when it needs to undergo endocytosis. So now, oops, just ignore that. What we remember is that Endocytosis, specifically bulk transport, or more generally actually, bulk transport did not involve or was not carrier mediated. It didn't involve transport proteins. This still does not involve transport proteins because it doesn't specifically say that something has to go through a transport protein. All this says, this receptor mediated endocytosis, is that some receptor proteins are going to sort of gang around this specific macromolecule that they found interesting and then sort of coat it with themselves. I and mean, once they've coated that specific macromolecule they found interesting, they're going to then create a vesicle. And this is this idea of endocytosis happening because there's vesicle formation in pinocytosis and phagocytosis and even in exocytosis. Once you've created this vesicle, this definitely tells you that you're definitely doing bulk transport. And that's why more so than not, this is still considered bulk transport because the proteins themselves aren't actually allowing something to flow through as simply as we saw in receptor-mediated um, active transport. It's not as simple as that, as this just arrow going down. It's this vesicle forming another lysosome, forming a secondary lysosome, and then eventually leading to digestion. The basic example that you can look of um, for this idea that your text mentions and your notes mentions is the idea of cholesterol. Um, specifically, so we can write EX, um, cholesterol uptake, meaning cholesterol being put into the cell from blood by cells. Your cells, remember, they want cholesterol. Cholesterol is not all that bad of a thing. It's bad in certain quantities and certain types, but cholesterol is absolutely crucial for it to maintain the fluidity of any cell membrane. So it's important to note that you have to get cholesterol in, but the only way you can get it in is through a bulk transport of receptor-mediated endocytosis in which cholesterol is going to be that specific macromolecule that the receptor proteins for cholesterol notice and you're going to surround it and then coat it and then create a vesicle and fuse it with the lysosome so that it can be digested and used on that cell membrane for fluidity. So now we've sort of concluded our discussion on membranes and transport. This is was bulk transport. We understood that bulk transport involves phagocytosis, um, which is a part of endocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis, and also exocytosis, which was release. And now we have a much better understanding of what membranes are in terms of their structure and how that relates to transport.